Nimrod, a mighty hunter. This is the history of the descendants of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jophat, and the sons born to them after the flood. The sons of Ham were Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. Cush became the father of Nimrod. He was the first to be a mighty king on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahuwah. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Yahuwah. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, capital B, A-B-E-L, Iraq, capital E, R-E-C-H, Akkad, capital A, C-C-A-D, and Kalna, capital C, A-L-N-E-H, in the land of Shanai, capital S, H-I-N-A-R, in Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq. Out of the land of Shanai, Nimrod went forth into Assyria and built Nineveh, capital N-I-N-E-V-E-H, Revolt, R-R. Kala, capital C A L A H, and Rizan, capital R E S E N, which is between Nineveh, capital N I N E V E H, and Kala, capital C A L A H. Together, these towns, villages, made the great city of Nineveh. Genesis 10, verses 1, 6 to 12. They, the Jews, Hebrews, will rule the land of Assyria, Syria and Iran, with the sword and the land of Nimrod, Iraq, within her gates. Thus will the Messiah deliver us from the Assyrians when he comes into our land, Israel. And when he treads on our borders, Michael 5, verse 6, this verse from Micah will be fulfilled when Yahushua returns. That is, when Israel will include all of the following land. On the same day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt, the Nile, to the great river Euphrates in Iraq. Genesis 15 Chapter verse 18, when Yahushua returns to Jerusalem, Israel will become a huge country. There are a lot of negative things written about Nimrod by Christian writers, but there is no scriptural evidence to support their claims. The scriptures do not state anywhere that Nimrod was wicked or that he did evil in the sight of of Yahuwah, or that he enticed others to be wicked. When someone was wicked, the scriptures state they were wicked. When they entice others to do wickedly, we are told about it. For example, Yahuwah saw the wickedness of man and saw that his thoughts were continually evil. Genesis 6, verse 5. Omra, that's capital O. M R I did evil in the sight of Yahuwah and dealt wickedly above all. First Kings 16, verse 25. Ahab, the son of Omri, capital O, M R I did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. First Kings 16, verse 30. Manasseh did wickedly above all and made Judah to sin. Second Kings 21, verse 21, 21st chapter, verse 11. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and Ahaziah, king of Israel, did very wickedly. Second Chronicles 20, verse 35. Libna led Judah astray. Second Chronicles 21, verse 11. No such statement was ever written about Nimrod. What the scriptures do say is Nimrod was a hunter and was a son of Cush, 
grandson of Ham, and great-grandson of Noah, who was a very righteous man. Nimrod was born about 2,000 years after creation and approximately 500 years after Noah's flood. Nimrod was the very first great king on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahuwah. And what hunters do is provide food. He became the king of Babel and other places. Then he moved to Assyria to build Nineveh and the surrounding towns. The phrase before Yahuwah means he was aware of the presence of Yahuwah and he hunted at the presence of Yahuwah. When we serve Yahuwah, whatever we do, we do all things before Yahuwah. Colossians 3 verse 23. If we study the scriptures carefully, the people who came before Yahuwah were righteous people. Three times in the year will, will all your men appear before Yahuwah Elohim. Elohim of Israel, Exodus 34, verse 23. Hannah poured out her heart and soul before Yahuwah. 1 Samuel 1, verse 15. King David sat before Yahuwah. 2 Samuel 7, verse 18. All nations will worship before Yahuwah and glorify his name, Psalm 86, verse 9. The two holy witnesses stand before Yahuwah, Revelation 11, verse 4. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous before Yahuwah, walking blamelessly in all the commandments, Luke 1, verse 6, that he may establish your hearts, blameless and holiness before our Elohim, and Father, at the coming of Yahuwah, Yahushua. 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 13. All of these people who came before Yahuwah were God-fearing, rebellious, or wicked people cannot come before Yahuwah because Yahuwah is far from the wicked and only hears the prayers of the righteous. Proverbs 15, verse 29. The fact that Nimrod hunted before Yahuwah strongly infers that he knew Yahuwah, and we know that Yahuwah would not have accepted his work if he had been wicked. Notice that Yahuwah did not accept Cain's work. But for Cain and his offering, Yahuwah had no respect. Genesis 4, verse 5. And the scriptures tell us Cain was wicked. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. The scriptures do not say Nimrod was wicked or evil. We also need to notice, Yahuwah never said Nimrod was righteous either. The Bible tells us, Cush became the father of Nimrod. He was the first to be a mighty king on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahuwah. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Yahuwah, Genesis 10, verses 8 and 9. If we study what the scriptures say in Hebrew, many people will be surprised. We need to remember that in Hebrew, the nuances of English grammar and punctuation do not appear. This is word for word what the Hebrew scriptures say about Nimrod written in Hebrew. Cush, he generated Nimrod. He started to become a master for in the earth. He became master for hunter to faces of Yahuwah. On so he is being said as Nimrod, masterful hunter to faces of Yahuwah. That verse is very surprising. Nimrod was closer than just being before Yahuwah. He was literally face to face with Yahuwah. To be face to face with someone means to be close enough to be within visual range. Could a wicked man be face to face with Yahuwah?
the Hebrew word for face in these references is the plural word, P-H-N-I-M. So Nimrod was in the P-H-N-I-M of Yahuwah, literally face to face. To be that close is more than Yahuwah merely looking on and approving or disapproving of the person's actions. The relationship between Yahuwah and Nimrod appears to have been a very close one at some point in Nimrod's life. It is possible for Nimrod to have once been a righteous man face to face with Yahuwah. Then perhaps he later became the unscrupulous man he had been portrayed as being in the legends. We will never know for sure, but there is a verse that infers Nimrod did in fact begin with the blessing, blessing of Yahuwah. In English, the verse reads, Cush was the father of Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. First Chronicles 1 verse 10. In Hebrew, this verse says, Cush, he generates Nimrod. Nimrod, he started to become a masterful man on earth. So Nimrod started to become a mighty man. Then something went wrong. The name Nimrod, or in Hebrew, Nimrod, capital N-I-M-R-U-D, means upstart, someone who is arrogant. Solomon was a man who started off being face-to-face -face with Yahuwah. And the scriptures tell us he turned away from Yahuwah, disobeyed Yahuwah's commands, and became evil. Perhaps Nimrod's life took the same wrong turn. Nimrod may have been arrogant, but the scriptures do not say Nimrod was involved in the building of the tower in Shana, later called Babel or that he began the Babylonian religious cult. These accusations have been leveled at him, but the Bible does not say any of those things. Nimrod was the king of Babel and surrounded cities in the land of Shinar, but had already moved to Assyria and began building Nineveh before the Tower of Babel was started, Genesis 10, verses 10 through 12. There was no particular leader at that time of the building of the tower. The scriptures make it clear that the tower was a joint effort, not ordered by any one person or king. Nimrod's name was not mentioned in regard to its construction, Genesis 10, verses 2 through 9. However, Nimrod was fully involved in the construction of Nineveh as the Bible states. If Nimrod was the king of Babel at the time of the construction of the Tower of Babel, the Bible would have stated that. But by the time of the building of the tower, Nimrod had already moved on. Archaeology has proven the Tower of Babel certainly did exist. The scriptures are our guide, and all scriptures are inspired by Yahuwah himself. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. If Nimrod had been as evil as people say he was, and if he had behaved wickedly or enticed millions of people to do wickedly, Yahuwah would have said so, as he has in other scriptures within the Bible about other people. Nimrod may or may not have become the wicked man he is portrayed as, but to accuse wicked is wrong. But to accuse Nimrod of wickedness for no other reason than because tradition and myth or legend says he was wicked is wrong. The Bible says do not listen to myth or legends. 1 Timothy 1 verse 4. What Yahuwah did tell us is that Nimrod was the first great almighty king a ruler on earth, who also happened to be a hunter in the face of Yahuwah. Christian and secular writers are too quick to criticize Bible characters without searching the truth from and cross-referencing the scriptures. 
They say things like, we suggest or we believe or we cannot take the Bible literally and other comments like that. Almost everything written about Nimrod outside of the Bible is speculation and we cannot rely on old traditions or legends. We need to rely solely on the absolute truth of the word of Yahuwah. The only truth we have regarding Nimrod is written in the Bible and the Bible does not indicate that he was wicked, not in his early life anyway. Nimrod was a significant Bible character. He was the first masterful king on earth, or in other words, a great leader. He was a masterful hunter. He mastered the art of hunting, and that would have been to provide food for the people. The Bible does not mention any other person who hunted in the presence of Yahuwah. As leader, Nimrod would have hunted down and killed the wild animals that could have harmed his people. Ancient kings did not sit in fancy palaces and give orders. They went out and protected their people, provided for them, and fought wars for them. Nimrod was also a great town, T-O-W-N, planner, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. He had several cities built, including the great city of Nineveh. So here we have a great leader who fed and protected his people and provided them with housing, education, and a society in which to live. It is possible the way Nimrod went about achieving his goals was questionable. The city of Nineveh became only one of a very few Gentile cities that were visited by Yahuwah as recorded in the scriptures. The people of Nineveh must have known a degree of righteousness at some point in the city's history. Because at the spoken word of Yahuwah, the whole city repented and turned back to Elohim. Yahuwah said to Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach out to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of Yahuwah. Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. Jonah entered into the city a day's journey, and he cried out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed Elohim and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The news came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and removed his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He made proclamation published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to Elohim. Yes. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence in his hands. Who knows? Yahuwah may turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so we might not perish. Elohim saw their works and they turned from their evil way. And Elohim relented of the disaster he said he would do to them and he did not do it. Jonah 3 verses 2 through 10. It is clear all of the people, including the king of Nineveh, knew about Yahuwah. They believed in him. They knew enough to obey his word, repent, fast, humble themselves, and be saved. That is more than many people in this modern world take notice of. We see in the Bible it was Nimrod who originally built Nineveh. Sadly, Nineveh did not remain repentant. It was eventually laid waste and became desolate. Nahum 3 verse 7, Zephaniah 2 verse 13. 
but the people of Jonah's generation who lived in Nineveh will be eternally blessed. Yahushua said, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, someone greater than Jonah is here. Matthew 12, verse 41. Luke 11, verse 32. We will never know for sure if Nimrod started out well, then turned away from Yahuwah and become the terrible person he is portrayed as being. The ancient peoples did not value life as we do today. Their actions were warlike and hideously cruel. But because they were not famous like Nimrod was, their actions have mostly gone unrecorded in history. Other kings of that time in history did the most terrible things, and the wicked actions of at least four of them have been attributed to Nimrod, even though the Bible tells us he was not in that area at, that, at the time. Then, just to make the legends fit Nimrod, he has been given at least four other names, yet scripturally, he was only ever known as Nimrod. Capital N I M R U D. Some of the wicked deeds attributed to him happened long before he was born, i.e., before the flood, 500 years before he was born, and long after he would have died, i.e., after the Exodus. It is quite possible for Nimrod to have been a man influenced by that barbaric time in history and was no worse than other unnamed kings who were alive then. We only need to read in the Bible about Samson and what was done to him to see how barbaric the ancient pagan kings were. Judges 13, verses 24 to Judges 16, verse 30. Nimrod would have battled viciously with other kings, violently fought for land, fought ferociously over his people and been influenced by the idolatry that was commonplace in that generation. But because his name was written in the Bible, he is being continuously vilified. We do not really know what Nimrod did or did not do because we were not there. We need to keep an open mind about Nimrod because the Bible does not say he was wicked or righteous, just that he once lived. We do not know if Yahuwah approved or disapproved of Nimrod because Yahuwah chose to keep silent on the matter. If we put aside all the myths written about Nimrod scripturally, what do we have left? A powerful, brave man who led his people, fed, protected, and built cities for them all under the watchful eyes of Yahuwah. Amen, and God bless you.